In today's video, we will have a look at the Werner's postulates, a very important core topic in coordination chemistry. Alfred Werner was the first chemist to formulate his ideas on the structure of coordination compounds and today we are going to have a look at the main postulates of the Werner's theory. So, starting with the first point, in coordination compounds, metals show two types of linkages or valencies which are primary and secondary valencies. So, Sir Werner was the very first chemist to put forward these two terms that is primary valency and secondary valency with respect to coordination compounds. Okay, now the second, third and fourth, all of these points are actually elaborating on the very first one. Fine, let us look at primary valencies specifically. Primary valencies are the ones which are ionizable and are usually satisfied by negative ions. Okay, so let us try to understand what do you mean by ionizable and uh, satisfied by negative ions. Okay, so here we have an example which is a tetraamine complex of uh, copper. Okay, and the balancing anion present is sulfate. Right, so let us identify parts of it first. This is the metal. Okay, amine is the ligand, yes, fine, and sulfate over here is the counter anion. It's, it's negatively charged, so we will, we will refer to it as counter anion, okay. Now, if this particular complex is dissolved in water, or if you study its dissociation, then there is one thing that we know about uh, complexes or coordination compounds is that if you dissolve them in water or if you are studying their dissociation, then the coordination sphere will always remain intact, right? So this particular compound or this particular complex will split like this or it will dissociate in this form wherein the complex or the coordination sphere will remain intact. This is not going to get ionized into copper and NH3, okay? And what gets ionized over here is the counter anion or the balancing anion, right? So this is how the splitting or dissociation will occur, right? So using this example, you can understand that sulfate is the ionizable species. The one that is getting dissociated or the one that is getting ionized, okay? So your primary valencies are ionizable and they are usually satisfied by negative ions, okay? So sulfate over here is that species which is actually getting ionized, fine? Now, in simple terms, you can always remember that primary valency is in nothing but the oxidation number of the metal. So primary valency is a number, right? Whenever you have a question on identify the primary valency, you have to put down a number, right? So primary valency is always equal to the oxidation number of the metal, yes? So in this particular example, the primary valency is equal to the oxidation number of copper and that is Yes, so whatever is the oxidation number of your metal and that oxidation number will usually be positive because you are dealing with metal and that's why you require negative ions to balance it out. So ionizable we saw and then we saw that satisfied by negative ions. Why is it satisfied by negative ion? It's simply because the metals are electropositive, they will carry a positive charge. And to balance that out, you require an anion, okay? So the primary valency in this example is the oxidation state of the metal and that is 2, okay? Coming to the secondary valency, these are non-ionizable and satisfied by negative or neutral atoms. In simple terms, remember, secondary valency is always equal to the coordination number of your complex, yes? So in this particular case, what does not get ionized or which, which does not split is a or a ligand that is tetraamine so the number of ligands which are attached to the central metal atom that is going to be your secondary valency so in this case secondary valency is going to be four okay and the fourth postulate is again a part of the third one secondary linkages have specific spatial arrangement around the central metal atom 
So we already know in coordination chemistry, depending on the coordination number, we have a spatial arrangement, right? Like if it is six, then in most cases it is octahedral. If it is four, then it can be square planar or it can be tetrahedral as well. The spatial arrangement of ligands, okay? So to cut down this long explanation in short, what we need to remember is that primary valency is equal to the oxidation state of the central metal atom and secondary valency is equal to the coordination number of a given complex. So let us try to solve uh, three more examples using the same concept. Okay, the first complex is a hexaamine cobalt complex. So the primary valency, you just have to look for the oxidation state of the metal. Okay, and be careful, the oxidation state will be a positive value. But when you write down the primary valency, you do not put the sign. Okay, so the sign has to be excluded out. So over here, cobalt is going to be in a plus 3 oxidation state. You require a counter anion of negative 3. So the primary valency is going to be 3. Okay. Secondary valency coordination number is 6. Okay. In the second example, it's a hexa aqua complex. Again, chromium is going to have an oxidation state of 3 plus. Primary valency will be 3 and secondary is the coordination number that is 6. Okay. In the third example, you can see that nickel over here will have an oxidation state of plus 2 plus 2 balanced uh, sorry plus 2 negative 4 overall will be negative 2 balanced by plus 2 okay so nickel is having an oxidation state of 2 plus primary valency will be 2 okay and secondary is the coordination number it's a tetra uh, cyanide complex so the secondary valency will be 4 okay so this uh, was uh, how to calculate the primary and secondary valencies in coordination compounds. Thank you so much for watching and follow my channel for more such content. Bye-bye.